Okay, okay, okay. Here we are. I want you to know that I have also been right where you are. Now, that's a loose concept because no, I haven't had cancer and some of you might have, you know, survived that. But I've done a lot my way. I have compromised myself. I have been uh, convinced to do things in ways that I do not appreciate and like and respect myself for having done. But I learned it. I learned it. I learned by going through it. And I am now here doing things my way and teaching people how to do them their way in order for you and them hey 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 who is that yo lace what's happening all the very best i teach people how to do it their way there this is why you may have heard me say no scripts i don't offer scripts actually that's not true i can give you some scripts but i don't want you to use my scripts i want you to butcher and morph my scripts because my basic notion of things is exactly the way i say it this is how i have built my own way of saying the stuff i truly love and i've been teaching people how to do this for a very long time <laughs> I've been teaching people how to get out of their own way and say exactly. You want to do a TED talk this year? Fantastic. TED or TEDx? There is a difference, but TEDx is good enough. And you want to bring it live on stage like, like a badass? We should talk. Because there is a craft to this. And what I want to talk to you about right now are a few things and i'm going to throw in the concept of the ted talk because lisa you just brought it up so i'm going to mention that i'm going to give you some assistance right here in this conversation after i talk about a few other things that i wanted to mention <clears throat> kindly remind me if i don't get there but i will get there because i pay attention so yo dennis what's happening big fella should we be talking soon you're on your way. Um, some of the things that you have, you know, you may think that you're alone or you may think you can't do this stuff or you may see me saying, you know, you got to pony up some money. And the fact is you got to. Why? Because I've been bent over by greedy, scum sucking leeches in the world of performance production, it's greasy agents stereotypical perfect examples of the la agent and they have reamed me and attempted to get me to thank them for doing so and i know what that feels like i know what that's like i know that that's wrong i allowed myself to buy into it when i was young and starry-eyed and innocent and naive and whatever it is hopeful and you know yeah there's shiny object syndrome in there too which is long gone for me because i don't care i know that that's bullshit so when i ask people to pony up it's because my stuff is worth it and i have watched over countless decades seeing people who want free stuff i had someone a year ago who desperately needed my stuff and couldn't pay and after badgering me for a period of time i said okay you got it did they do right by the program and by me no they didn't do they feel apologetic and humble about it sure that's good are they welcome in again sure they are do they have to pay absolutely out of the goodness of my heart, I do the best I can. And in fact, if you get onto a call with me, if you actually book a call, you will find pleasant surprises of inexpensive, either discounts or gifts added on. Even at my lowest, I'll tell you this here, even at my lowest investment, I allow you to tack on $800 calls with me that are 
what I call a 90 minute hour for 250 bucks each. Now, I'm not saying that $250 is like, oh my God, Paul, that's still $250. I know it is. But my calls are a badass fucking 90 minute hour. And I char- I get paid 800 bucks. So when I give you a discount of 250 per piece, if you're not going into my coaching, that's because I want you. I want you to jump in and grab them. Okay. But I, I'm, you know, I, I give plenty of free stuff and I'm not saying, you know, oh, poor me. I give lots of free stuff. It has nothing to do with that. I give lots of free things because I want you to get started being the antidote, the solution, the alternative to all of that driveling, lackluster, sorry ass, bullshit, stale, boring excuse for presentation that most people are doing here. And I know that the reason that this stuff works is because in this world of video is king, video is queen, all of this badass shit for social media, all of that great stuff, and on live stages, and that brings me to Lisa in a moment, on live stages, the way to attract and compel and convince is not by telling people you should listen to my important stuff, it's by making it big and unique and fascinating and compelling and powerful and original. Nobody cares about you and imitating Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey. If you imitate them, no one gives a fuck. There's already a person out there doing that. The way to do this is the way that the originals have turned into originals. I mentioned Beyonce before. Beyonce is an original. Beyonce is the one that rose above her original group, which you know some of you youngsters might not even know. Yes, Beyonce was in a group before she was Beyonce. It was called Destiny's Child. She is a badass, rose to a level of superstardom because she became her own unique entity unto the world. You know, do I have to mention Michael Jackson here? Do I have to mention Prince? I can mention people, you know, people I've hung out with, Joe Cocker, Joan Baez, Weird Al Yankovic, who, by the way, is an unbelievably talented multi-instrumentalist musician who his whole band says he can play their instruments better than they can. And yet he chooses comedy and he's managed to make a giant, you know, empire of his particular niche. No one does what he does. Quite unusual, quite unique. Barack Obama became president once upon a time, you know, 13 years ago. The man was a badass presenter of his messages, a very smart person. You can like him or not, I don't care. His ability to speak his truth Relative to, you know, if you don't like Barack Obama, maybe it's because you do like Trump. The difference between them is Barack Obama shows you he's smart when he talks. Trump shows you he's ignorant and doesn't want to hear anybody who disagrees with him. Trump shows you that he prefers to remain uninformed and uneducated. There's a big difference. You can like or dislike what I say. You can agree with me. I don't care. The fact is we're talking about compelling delivery. Saying what you mean the way only you can with the things that you truly care about requires that you get out of your own way and say exactly what you mean. And this is where it comes to a basic credo, okay? If you don't stand for something, If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. What is it you believe in and what are you going to do about it? What is required right now, here and now, here we are. The next year has now arrived. I don't need to tell you that. Everybody's making all sorts of promises and I don't make promises. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I don't care about doing it like now because I'm already doing it. 
I've been choosing to live life on my own terms, my own way, by my own rules, only working with who I want to as best as I possibly can for a very, very, very long time. Did I have to take lots of lumps? Did I have to bend over for all sorts of people for the price of education in order for them to teach me that I shouldn't have listened to them? Because it didn't feel right, but I did it for the wrong reasons, and they taught me something. Do it my way. That's why I charge money for my shit. There's lots of people who can get all sorts of free stuff. You can step into my free group and you can get plenty, 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 plenty. Yes, your message matters. So here's the thing about um, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You see, everybody's scripts, if you have, raise your hand here if you've bought someone's scripted crap. If you've paid for someone's scripted course, the reason it's bullshit is because, number one, it's not your words. Number two, even if it is your words, you write differently than you speak. So if you try to say a script, you will sound like a fucking chump. You're not a good actor, unfortunately. I don't know you, but no, you're not a good actor. <laughs> I can teach you to be better. It's part of what I do. But I don't teach acting. Acting isn't about being fake. It's about channeling your authenticity, your unique connection to whomever you are trying to play, even if you're acting in someone else's role. Now, I don't, I don't act in other people's stuff. I create my own scripted work that is in a highly structured improv, and I do my own shit myself. Everything is autobiographical for me. I teach people how to do that, and that's why it works here. I spend time seeing all sorts of people doing scripts, and the fact is that if you try to read, to speak what you have written, it will sound shitty. If you try to memorize it, it will sound shittier. And if you try to do it with a teleprompter, it will suck. Because you won't be impressively convincing at all. You'll be trying to look like you're not memorizing or reading from something. And you will be looking exactly like that. Your worst fear when you add the teleprompter that you have a concern that the teleprompter may make you look and sound unoriginal will be realized. Bang, boom, you'll look like shit. Oh, those teleprompter things are so convenient. Oh, those ring lights are so convenient. Oh, those scripts are so convenient. You want to do the hard work? You want to get good at this stuff? It's not a, it's not in a freebie. <laughs> Who here thinks that they're going to get all the brilliance from a freebie. Hands down. Chump. <laughs> That's why I charge money for my stuff. I've been bent over and reamed by plenty of people promising me all sorts of things. Yeah, the check's in the mail. I won't come in your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bent over and assume scholarship position. And if you don't like that because it's a little too X-rated, I got some swampland in Florida I can get you cheap. It's not about getting free. Find yourself the best coach who doesn't promise you horse shit. My stuff is priced at a few different levels that I think are relatively affordable. I'm comfortable with where they are. And you, if you can afford it and when you're ready for it, you have to pony up. If you get into a conversation, if you book a call, you'll see that I give you a discount as a gift. I don't tell everybody. I don't make a big announcement about always making discounts on my discounted offers on my calls. That's for the people who are ready to pony up. That's my gift. Not because I need to. I have plenty of people who get on a call with me. I make sure that when you get on a call, you're ready to buy something. 
because I don't have time to waste trying to convince anybody. This is selling. This is as close to me selling as I get. The rest of it, you want some cloying, desperate selling bullshit? Oh, my fucking God. Go, go try those people's scripts and do it like everybody else. What the world needs, what the world needs is authenticity. I started calling my stuff ethical a long time ago, and suddenly people were saying ethical all over the place. People changed the names of their groups. And I'm not saying that they changed it because they saw me. I'm saying that some of my friends out here, friends, peers, and colleagues started to change their stuff after I had already been calling my stuff, you know, ethical the theater of ethical selling, all that stuff. They may have seen my stuff and decided, oh, we need to hop on the ethics board, you know, the ethics train. Yeah, it is ethical. Straight up, no bullshit, no fluff, no cloying desperate crap. Up, Houston, Texas, in the house. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to say about that is that I like to let people know that I've already been there. So all of my free stuff is stuff that I'm comfortable giving away. And the rest of it is all about making sure that you understand that an investment gets you what you deserve because I have worked my ass off to construct things that help people. So that's your choice. The other thing about if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to everybody to deliver the way you deserve to, the way other people deserve to. You set an example. You set an example. People want the badasses to show them the way that they can gain what they need. Everybody deserves this. This is my desire in life. I want everybody to bring their own unique, authentic badassery, unlike anybody else, with a slice of uh, power and guts. If you say the shit that you truly care about the way you truly mean, you can stand proudly after you press stop or end broadcast or whatever the fuck it is. You can stand proudly knowing that what you did is part of the oeuvre of everything that you do in the right way. That is liberating value not just for business for your life so now i want to talk about lisa's thing you want to you want to do a ted talk a tedx talk right the ted talks are reserved for the heavy hitters i don't even know if they're still doing those but i have some friends who have done some ted talks they're good they're big when you do a TED, when you do a TEDx, when you bring your public speaking skills to bear upon a group, you have a time limit and you want to figure out how to refine what you are doing into a delicately but powerfully constructed delivery that opens with a big statement that builds wonderful example of sharing your message <laughs> thank you yes one time this is and 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 here we have this i'm going to share that this is a wonderful example of sharing your message fantastic 365 go live there you go when you bring that message constructed so that you open like gangbusters open like gangbusters with something important you pay attention to the audience. You treat everybody. You don't treat them like, I mean, I've said this before. I've performed for, I've, my biggest live audience was 25,000. That's a big audience. Usually the audiences are, you know, like a big theater. is A large theater is 2,500 people. 
um, you know, when, when I'm at a rock festival and I've performed something at a rock and roll festival, you know, 4,000, 6,000, 10,000 people, that's a lot of people. It's a different type of thing, but still you treat it the same way. Okay, now if you're in a theater, you have rapt attention. And the reason I'm going to talk about theater from 2,500 or 3,000 seats down to, you know, I don't know, 100. Or performing for kids at a kid's school. I've done that too. If you have many hundreds of people, you still are looking out into the audience and you are talking at all times to one and only one person. And that is a person who gets you. That's a person, you're not trying to convince anybody. That's what I'm doing here. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. You understand what I'm talking about. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> the people who don't can go fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> They can ignore it until they get it, and then they are part of the people who get it. But until then, I'm talking to you, and you understand it. One person and one person only. You look around the audience, and you make eye contact with lots of different people. Each one of them is the same one person who gets you. That way you're, you know, I mean... Why be nervous? You, you, there is one reason to be nervous. You want to do a good job. You want to respect the people who are giving their time to you. That's what you do with your due diligence in advance. But everything else after that, you don't have to look at them as, what if I fuck up? What if I make a mistake? What if something happens that undermines the thing? That's where my performance mindset shizzle comes into play comes into plizzle. <laughs> Performance mindset is 180 degrees different from what you actually think it is. And when you employ what I refer to as performance mindset, which is one of the skill sets of my training, it will enable you to move forward with all of this stuff so that you can step up to a you know group of people live or like this and bring it like gangbusters. So I touched on the different things I wanted to. I wanted you to know I've been there. I've been boned by blood-sucking assholes, greedy bastards who have taken advantage of me, and I learned. I learned that what I have is just like the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy always had the power to get home. She just had to come to a point by going through the fire, not around it, but through the fire to come to an understanding that she had it all along. So if I'm comparing myself to a 14-year-old you know, girl played by someone who, who, who Hollywood renamed and made too thin, gave her eating problems, drug disorders, drinking problems, and then ultimately her demise. But she lives on in her fame for her talent. Yeah, I compare myself to that person because that story puts you squarely where you need to be. Don't give up. Go through the fire, not around. Come to a point where you have an understanding that it always has been inside of you. What you gain from people like me is an ability to understand through a supportive, objective invested outside eye that can show you what you need to unlock and unleash from within that makes you into the profound, unique, compelling individual you deserve to be, you always have been, and all of the shit that's stopping you from doing that fades and crumbles 
because your mommy issues, your daddy issues, your self-critical issues, whatever the fuck they are that you have let get in your own way, get transferred from enemy to ally so that you can also say to others, I've been there too. And that is how I got to where I am, the person I am now. And you can stand proudly and say all of your truth the way you so righteously fucking deserve. As my shameless suggestion to close this little thing, I reward you when you book a call with discounts far beyond all of the stuff that I post. When you're ready, I will make it even more affordable and delightful to step up and in. It's my gift above and beyond because I like to. That's how I do it. You deserve also. I hope this helped. <clears throat> when you're ready for some of this big ass shizzle, This year, my business is flying. <laughs> I'm so psyched about that stuff. And everybody who ponies up and steps in gets everything that even my mentors and coaches have taught me. I put myself into a big money mastermind this year. Big money. And everything that that will show me gets passed on to all of my clients as well. When you deal with people who are growing and scaling and doing what you care about the way you want, as long as it's not bullshit promises, that's the cool thing about people working with people who really, truly fucking care. Be compassionate, but take no shit. And keep moving forward, giving everything you can to everybody who lets you know they are ready. See you later, boys and girls. Goodbye, boys and girls. <laughs>